A farmer named Cain prepared a sacrificial offering to God of his finest fruits and vegetables. His brother Abel also prepared a sacrificial offering, it being of the finest animals he had raised. Either there was a dispute over whose offering was better, or God truly favored Abel's over Cain's. The final result ended in Cain sacrificing Abel on an altar, his brother being the finest offering he could give. As punishment, Cain's father cursed him with a mark and cast him out to wander in the darkness in the land of Nod. Roaming the land of Nod, Cain encountered a woman named Lilith. She noticed a swirling stain in the aura around him, a mark of some dark and unfathomed power. Murder. He possessed the power to kill other higher beings, not to hunt as Adam had, but to kill as had the Lord. She was amazed, for he bore no signs of godhood, but he wandered in the dust like a lesser beast. Seeing that he was cold and hungry, she welcomes Cain into her warmth. Lilith identified herself as Adam's first wife, the original wife of Cain's father. After staying with her for some time, the two became lovers. He realizes that she had powers and magic that he too would like to possess. So he pleaded her for these gifts. Lilith prepared an awakening ceremony for Cain by cutting herself with a knife, bleeding into a bowl, and giving it to him so that he may drink. After Cain partook of Lilith's blood, he is visited by three angels, agents of God. Each angel offers Cain a chance to repent for the murder of Abel. However, Cain rejects each of them and for each angel he rejects, a curse is laid upon him. He and his children are cursed with a weakness to fire, vulnerability to sunlight, and worst of all, a beast within that hungers for blood. After suffering this curse for some time, a fourth angel appeared to Cain, offering the way of Golconda, essentially Zen, the only way to light, by the mercy of God. After the experience, Cain officially became awakened, possessing the following disciplines, serenity, potence, fortitude, obfuscate, dominate, presence, protein, animalism, and aspects. Cain then became aware of the path of blood, the final path from which all paths stem. And all these powers, he broke his bond with Lilith and left her. Cain continued to wander the land of Nod in loneliness. The memory of his sin drowned him in sorrow. It was not for many ages until he decided to be amongst humans again. His powers and his mark were well known to mortal men, and some even worshipped him. Finally, Cain settled in a small farming community named Ubar. It was here, in this first city, that he became the Dark Father. Cain finally settled in a city, as I said known as Ubar. It was inhabited by the children of, S of Seth and ruled by King Enoch. The people of Ubar were aware of Cain's mark and both marveled and feared his power and thus came to worship him. Upon arrival to the city, Enoch relinquished his kingship so that Cain may rule instead. According to Toreador legend, being amongst the mortals, Cain noticed a couple who were very much in love. Seeing their love amplified his own loneliness and sin. After having dwelt in his sin for an aeon, Cain thought that maybe he could reconcile something in his nature by embracing them with the gift of immortality, so that their love would live for all eternity. However, after being embraced 
the lovers discovered that they could not have children together. In an act of despair, they both walked into the sunlight to their final death. Cain was so heartbroken over the event that he forbade anyone to speak their names. Thus, their names are lost to history. The former king, Enoch, he desired Cain's power and requested it. However, Cain showed reluctance because of the loss of the lovers he had embraced decades ago. And Uriel's warning. Get the raging of the beast within. The yearning to be with others like him. And Enoch begging for the embrace. Cain turned the young man. In honor of his newfound vampiric child, Cain declared the Ubar now be known as the city of Enoch. After some time, Enoch desired kindred brethren as his father had. With Enoch's insistence, Cain embraced his second child, Irad, imparting to him a strength unlike any other. Irad thus became Cain's arm, a commander of armies. Soon to follow was Zila. Zila was beautiful. Cain could not resist the embrace. Interestingly, even after the embrace, Zila did not desire him. It frustrated Cain to the point that he was ripping his hair out of his head. He did anything and everything to make her desire him, yet she would not have him. Finally, Cain sought the power of a being called the Crone, who ultimately tricked him into a blood bond. She forced the first vampire to embrace her. Uh, by the way, a blood bond is when a vampire intakes another vampire's blood or another magical creature's blood. They basically become subservient to them and bound by their magic. Anyways, she forced Cain to embrace her. The crone sent her new thrall away telling him that his blood would have the power to bond others, as Cain himself was bonded to the crone. The discovery of the blood bond was finally what made Zila agree to marry her sire, Cain. For a year and a day, Cain labored in the service of the crone. However, Cain never again drank from the crone's blood during that period. One night, he tricked her by saying he had terrible dreams in his sleep, and was fearful that his childer lusted after his blood. He asked the crone for secret knowledge to protect himself against his progeny, and in response to his pleas, the crone went to a tree made of gopher wood and broke off a limb, sharpening it into a stake. Oh, I see. He told Cain to pierce the heart of his wayward child with it to render him still. Cain thanked the crone, and using quick movements, Cain seized the stake, seized the stake and drove it into her heart, breaking the blood bond in the process. He kissed her cold, weathered lips and left her to meet the sunrise. Now, there was three second-generation vampires who coexisted in the city of Enoch. Enoch, Irad, and Zila. They in turn learned the ways of making progeny and had embraced the third generation. Under Cain's order, he declared it that no more vampires be made. Supposedly, they obeyed and the city prospered for ages, becoming the first city ruled by vampires. The city's economy thrived on the technology and the ag agricultural know-how that Cain brought to the first city. Being immortal, he had gained so much knowledge that he was almost godlike. Having wandered throughout the cradle of civilization, he was able to bring Sumerian technology as well, namely the wheel. And two, as I just said, being a farmer for most of his life, Cain had cultivated wondrous and perfect groves. So for generations, under Cain's rule, the economy prospered, and the city became a mighty empire. The third generation antediluvians even built statues, shrines, temples, and a grand library and pools all surrounding a large five-level palace that Cain ruled from upon his lofty ivory throne. The Great Flood changed everything and destroyed the city of Enoch and all of the children of Seth. Cain was so despondent that he disappeared. His surviving childer and grandchilder sought him out, 
And when they found him, Cain told them to leave him. Left to fend for themselves, the antediluvians ended up killing Cain's second generation childer. When Cain discovered what happened, he, th he sought out the antediluvians who had rebuilt a new city known as the Second City. Unbeknownst to them, the Dark Father cursed his descendants with the characteristic weakness of each clan. Interestingly, the Camarilla officially denies the existence of Cain, even going as far as concealing or destroying books that even refer to Cain's return, thus promoting skepticism among modern kindred. In the next video, we will be talking about um, the main factions in Vampire the Masquerade, starting with the Camarilla and the Sabbat, and we may cover a few others, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. Have a good one, guys.